Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer, the host of Ikigai with Jennifer Shinkai, where we're going to talk about the Japanese concept of Ikigai or living a life of purpose. Here you're going to hear inspirational stories from all different types of people who are finding their own life of purpose. You're going to hear about how they found their Ikigai and what they do every day to live an integrated life. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Ikigai with Jennifer Shinkai. I am your host, Jennifer Shinkai, as you might have guessed, and I am so excited. We're having a world first for the Ikigai with Jennifer Shinkai podcast. We have our own Ikigai family, the Kuwa guys here with us today. So hooray, amazing to get this family project team together so many schedules, so busy, um, but it's hopefully going to inspire parents, children, members of communities to think about what are the unique and interesting ways you can bring about a feeling of ikigai uh, to your life. And as a family, what a brilliant way to connect life purpose with individual purpose to what it means uh, for your identity as a mother, as a father, as a brother, as a sister, as a son, as a daughter, as an auntie, as an uncle. I don't know many ways that we can um, bring our ikigai there. So before we get into talking about each of the members and their projects and how they're living life with meaning, um, I want to tell a little bit about how I first found out about the Kumagai family which was through a post on Facebook for the Tokyo Expat Network. And somebody was asking for interest, people living interesting lives who can speak English. I think it was for maybe a French TV show. And Susanna posted um, along with some other people, with all these interesting people living amazing lives. Susanna posted about um, her daughter's project, Sarah's project, um, about the uh, Kawa no Toshokan, Toshokan, Toshoshitsu, uh, the Toshokan. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking of my elementary school uh, kids. Uh, Kawa no Toshokan, like the, the Riverside Library uh, project, which she launched, which we will find out more about it. And then Susanna also shared about Daisuke's Cafe project, uh, which we'll talk about too. And Antonio, I don't know what your specific project is. Maybe you're a project manager, so we'll find out more about your role <laughs> later on. But Susanna shared about this and I thought, wow, one of the things that a researcher I was talking about, uh, Hasegawa Sensei, a lot of the content about Ikigai focuses on longevity, right? How you can live to 100, how you can be healthy and old. And I thought, do young people have ikigai? Do young people have a sense of <laughs> being alive? I was like, I'm not sure I did. But then when Susanna shared this, I thought, well, these two young people certainly seem to have it. And then when I was talking to Susanna, as we were um, thinking about this podcast, it was like, well, hang on, this is also not just the kids. This is a family ikigai. And what a great inspiration as we're heading to the holidays um, to think about that. So let's let's start with mom. Let's start with Susanna, just to do like a brief introduction of yourself and family project, family ikigai from your perspective. Oh, well, this is a, a, a very nice story. I really like uh, talking about my family. And firstly, Thank you for inviting us to your podcast. Mm -hmm. It's really, really nice. And I know it's been hard organizing. Everybody's <laughs> finished. Here we are, finally. Yeah. Well, the, the, the thing with the families, um, I think um, I was thinking the other day, like what my Ikigai is, and I think it's about togetherness. Yeah. Our togetherness in the family. Mm -hmm. And for, for me, it's very important to keep the family together yeah and um in um inspiring inspiring that thing in 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 the kids for antonio is also very important to do that so we kind of like are together all the time or try to be together all the time do things together yeah for antonio um weekends are very important with the family I know for dice games, our weekends are very important yeah, to, to spend the weekends doing something fun as a family. 
and um, I'm really happy. But not, it's not only our togetherness. I think whatever happens in 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 the family, because a family is at the end, the 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 starting of the community. Yeah, mm. it's where the community starts. So whatever happens in the family is going to reflect outside the house. Yeah. And um, it's going to, if the family is well, that is going to reflect outside the, the house, it's going to reflect in the community, and it's going to be a good thing for the community. In the other hand, when there's something heavy, when there are problems in the family, that is where the community problems happens, where the social problems happens. So everything, all the problems in society, I truly think that happened, yeah, starting a family. Mm. So in, for us, yeah, having our togetherness at our, um, it's been reflecting in our community, starting with our neighbors. Our neighborhood is just beautiful. We have this, um, we live in a, in a very small um, bunch of houses and we are all together all the time. Yeah, especially in COVID, it's very beautifully. Mm. So they use our garage the way they like, you know. They use, you see, you see our little kids in our neighborhood coming in and out of the house all the time. And and the neighbors don't, they know they don't have to say, ojamashimas or anything. They just <laughs> go in, they grab a banana here, and they go, you know, it's, we love it. And uh, in the same thing, and then it from the from the neighborhood it projects to to the community, and uh, I think uh, Sara and Isaac get that idea of projecting the togetherness in the family and bringing out to to the society to to com to the community, and I really love it. Yeah. Oh, so. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful! I can feel like your passion and excitement. It's so beautiful to hear. Um, and it's amazing what you say that it's true, you know, not only charity starts at home, but this, this feeling of if we don't feel together in our own home, it's how, how to make those connections outside. Um, and later on, I want to ask uh, actually Sarah and Daisuke about, you know, that uh, there's a, a story, right, that, you know, teenagers don't want to hang out with their parents. And so we, we get into that later. Maybe we put mom and dad mm -hmm. off and you can. <laughs> uh, but also like the pressure of Bukatsu, so club activities in Japan. Um, so I'm really interested uh, to hear um, about your thoughts on that. And just so you know about me, I have two kids. So I have a daughter who is in first grade and uh, junior high school and a son who is in fourth grade of elementary school. So you're like the senpai. Uh, the seniors of them to teach them the way. So I'm very excited for them to listen to this episode as well. But Antonio, how about for you, you know, the, the idea of the, the family ikigai, how is that showing up? Uh, you're calling from your office today. So you're obviously not all together all the time. No. <laughs> uh, but how, how does it um, impact your life and the choices that you make? You know, for, for me, um... My, my ikigai or the way I, I actually feel that I, I start my mornings are, are focusing on how can I make that day better to start with for the kids and for the family. That's probably one of the first things that I think in the morning. OK, how can I make myself better for my family? Um, and I, I've been lucky enough that I work in, a, in an organization and with a group of people that are really passionate about what we do. So also that, that allow me to, to focus really into, into my job and things that I do. So I work in hospitality. So, and I, I really enjoy what I do and I try to pass that to, to my family, Sarah and I care as connected as, I, as much as I can share with them and connect them with what I do every day. I think that's, that's so important also to, to make sure that you involve your family on, on what you're, you're passionate about. And in my case, for example, my, my job, uh, my team, my, my, my daily work, which I know is probably not as, as usual for other families, but I try to involve them in the conversation of my day, day to day things that I do at work. And also, again, going back to, to then and how can I, how can I make it better? How can I be uh, more patient? How can I be more reachable? How can I be more uh, connected with them? Um, which at this 
age is so difficult sometimes you know we all as, as you can see we are we're also a very busy family mm. uh, we all have different <laughs> projects we all do things uh, so sometimes it's really hard for us to kind of touch bases and try mm. to connect how you doing how you doing but but well we try our best to, to make sure that at least have a couple of dinners together a couple of breakfasts I, I try to make the point okay well let's try to have at least coffee once twice on, uh, on the week uh, weekdays so we can catch up and see what things are going um, I know for them it's hard because I ask so many times well what's the plan what's the plan today what's the plan tomorrow because I want to get as much information as I can from them also to be involved in what is happening um, again dealing with teenagers and both of them uh, are, are smiling but it, it, it can be also annoying Papa is always asking about my plans but the only reason I do is because I want to be connected so that's part of the icky guy that's that's part of where I feel that I, I want to be at together and as I connected as I am with them. That's good. But they're that. teenagers too. That's that's a lucky thing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't want to, no, don't want to paint you as uh, you know perfect. So my my last guest, uh, Saudi Okada, we were talking about perfection uh, being the enemy of ikigai. So of course you're mm. everyone in the room is human and um, I'm sure you have some days where you're not so together. Um, maybe where the library or the cafe is, is not going great and you kind of want to throw in the towel, but somehow uh, continuing on, um, it's, it's important as well. And I'm interested, maybe Antonio will come back to this or perhaps I'll forget, I'm not sure because I want to move to the kids, but um, uh, I'm interested um, so to ask you later about obviously the last two years with COVID has had huge impacts on um, hospitality. So perhaps mm. how has having this family project uh, really taking off in the last two years sort of helped you with the feelings of Ikigai as well? Maybe we'll come back to that. I've written a note, but sure. I'm sure that uh, Sarah and Daisuke are going to take me into different places <laughs> as well. So let's go to Sarah. I know you're waiting patiently, Daisuke. Okay. So Sarah, tell, tell me a little bit about what Ikigai is meaning for you, how it's showing up in your life. And you, and you are, uh, how old can you share? I'm you 15 right now and I am in first grade of high school. Wow. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Well, my Ikigai is, well, when my mom asked, what is your Ikigai? I had to think quite well because I really don't have uh, a goal in life yet. I don't really know what's life yet, I guess. and. Um, but when I thought of it, I really, really, truly uh, love seeing smiles of people. I really like people smiles and making them happy. And uh, the the library by the river, I'm gonna talk more about it later, but the library by the river can be really tough. You have to take over a thousand books to the river, even if it's cold, even if it's boiling hot. And we do that, there's four of us. So, um, it can be really hard and even rainy season we have to take care of the books if not it's going to get wet or it's going to be really humid and it's not gonna well it's you're not going to be able to read it so um for me of course we have hard times and we're busy and all but um actually you know knowing people that are going to be smiling or or people that are going to be happy on the other side just uh, just thinking of them which really makes me move on and yeah truly think yeah. smiles are powerful <laughs> well, I can feel the icky icky <laughs> from you I've been like imagining the smiles or remembering the smiles mm -hmm. of people and I'm sure there's many beautiful uh stories that you have of how yes. the, the library by the river <laughs> impacted people and, and how that impacted mm -hmm. to you now, Daisuke, your your project, I think, is the freshest to yep. come into the world. So, so tell mm -hmm. us about um, the project that you're doing, how that connects to your sense of ikigai. Um, and you are, please, I, I, maybe we, I should have been fair and asked uh, Susanna and Antonio how old they are as well, but <laughs> we can think of that later. I'm joking, I'm joking. Daisuke, <laughs> you're, um, I know you're a teenager, but how old are you? What grade are you in? I'm 14 and I'm in ninth grade. Um, third year of junior high. Right. And well, I'm just gonna briefly explain about my project. My project is I'm using an empty house, which the government is lending me right now. Um, that, and I'm doing a free cafe in this 
this empty house that was abandoned for four years. And well, like more than all the free stuff right now, like right now, like it doesn't matter if it's free or not. It's just like the connection and how how people want to feel so like lonely. Like that even like I don't know, like sometimes people don't have a person to talk to or like mm. to tell what they really think about. And like I this place is just like a just a space to share all that you want to share or just talk. It's mm. like, it's just like a free space that you could just have fun. And and the people you gather, Daisuke, in your in your free cafe, are they sort of people of your generation or is it any age? Like who's the target customer? Um, well, like I don't know, like our aim is to welcome anyone, like mm. seriously, just anyone. Because like if I am doing the cafe or if Sada's doing the cafe, it's kind of like weird for like one man to come like by himself when no one else is here or something like that. Like so people might think it's weird, but we just want everyone to come. Well, but moms, mm. kids, little kids or like a little old people, they come like they just want to talk or they want the kids to play and they want to get the books in the library by the river. We have books in the cafe too. We have a lot of picture books in the house. So, well, many moms come for picture books too. Wow. And, and what is it that, you know, doing this project, like what does it make you feel? I don't know, like, what does that make me feel? Yeah, I just like, like when people come to the cafe or like as you close the cafe, how do you feel at the end of the day? Maybe. Well, like I tell this to like every time people ask me about or similar questions is that I really like, like Sarah, I really like looking at the smiles on the people. Mm -hmm. So like I really... My aim is to have like the people smiling when they go out of the cafe. Like even no matter how dark they seem when they come in, yeah. I just want them to go back smiling or like happy or want to go home and like do stuff. I just want them to feel like that. And every time I close the cafe, I feel like, did I, was I able to do that? Or that time I should have like said this or did that. It's like, I don't know, maybe the quality of the day depends on how many people I sent home smiling. Wow, wow. Well, I don't know about smiles, but you must be getting a bit dusty in here because they're bringing tears to my eyes, those skates. So beautiful <laughs> to have that, that desire to have an impact, a positive impact on people and to, to send them home smiling um what a what a beautiful uh, sense of ikigai you know there's a an idea of the ikigai nine i talk a lot about in training and on the podcast um so please check it out later some some um japanese researchers and has been translated and one of the ways you can check in about ikigai is like you know i feel like i'm happy or i feel like i'm learning something i want to develop myself and some of the other ones are all about this idea of connection or togetherness that you've all raised as a family and feeling like i have impact on someone or feeling like i'm needed um, in the world and it definitely feels like as a family unit you having that emotion um, as well as in the projects that you work on so I want to kind of ask a practical question because we, we, we talked about like how busy you all are as a family. Um, so how, how do you manage everything? Um, I'll just go to Sarah first, maybe. I want to just talk about like that, you know, as a high school student, mm -hmm. uh, the expectations on you from, from an educational perspective, from a like, mm -hmm. yeah, club activity. So, so how do you say, mm -hmm. hang on? Or, or do you say, hang on, I don't know if you do. <laughs> um, actually, I go to online school right now. I go to this online school called ENCO. Okay. And it's actually a really famous online school right now. Um, it's really famous for um, technology class. We have like VR sets, like each student have VR sets. 
and we have over like 20,000 students in our school. So um, actually it's been quite an usual um, past few months because I've, I've started in a totally new environment in a totally new school. So, um, well, uh, I don't really feel, I don't really feel the pressure or the tension in the class like I used to do in junior high. Of mm. course, I loved junior high, but I used to belong to the brass band club and the brass band club, I had um, five or six days a week of practice, morning practice and um, Saturday practice and like every day, um, uh, evening practice, after mm. school practice. And uh, right now I am actually in a club, but because it's online, I can do it whenever I want. I can connect with people. I can do it as a team. So right now I don't really feel anything. Uh, I don't really feel anything that is like pressuring me, but I, I'm just excited to study the way I want in a, in a new way. Yeah. Great. So you're ticking off another of those Ikigai nine, like I'm excited yes. to learn and so on. Yes. Yeah. I'm really actually excited to learn. I, I found like passion in some subjects that I never thought I would be good at. And um, it's it's been a lot of um, learning about myself in this few, mo few months. So yeah, it's been amazing. Wonderful. Also, mm -hmm. the fact that uh, you're not commuting. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a big part. Make friends because uh, mm -hmm. uh commuting to school might take some time and and, mm -hmm. and you have more time when you don't commute. Yeah. and actually people ask me if i have like friends even though i go to online school and yes i do have friends from all over japan and actually like, out of japan too so um it's it's actually really cool to you know talk to people from really um unique backgrounds or place where the places where you can't imagine like I, I know a friend that lives in Shirakawa Go, which is in this like huge house um in Gifu oh and like in one of the yes uh, I'm just doing sorry this is very bad for a podcast I'm doing a body language here it's like the uh I'm now I'm speaking Japanese. Uh, they're like a, uh, you, you know how to describe it, Sarah, please save uh, me. No, no. Um, <laughs> Anyone jump in. They're like a triangle house with very steep and it's like a national yes. uh, treasure yes. of Japan yes. or something. Anyway. Yes. Kind of traditional, traditional way of building yes. the old. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right, we'll put it's something in the show by, like, notes. Stick. Sorry, Daisuke, what did you say? It's made like sticks, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah made of sticks. Yeah. 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 Okay. So everybody on this podcast knows what we're talking about. We hope the <laughs> listeners also understand. Um, I'll try and Google something and put it in later. But they, so they live in one of those houses. Yes. Amazing. One of my friends live in those houses. I have like really cool friends who have like really cool backgrounds. And um, actually it's, it's been, it's been a lot to process because it's, it's so many amazing things happening at the same time. And um, yes, I'm excited every day. <laughs> yes. Excited every day. That's the way. <laughs> that's the way to go about it. Yeah. Um, and it's it's great to hear. You know, many many people had their their lives changed, of course, and their working mm -hmm. styles changed because of of COVID. Um, mm -hmm. And technology is an amazing connector of people. And mm -hmm. as well as you point out, Susanna, you mm -hmm. know, you might think that you're busy, but if you suddenly don't mm -hmm. have two hours on the train every day. Mm. that's two hours of time that you can do something else not just yeah. binging on netflix like i do mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah um daisuke how about you how do you manage the the, the time the challenges <laughs> um honestly i'm not organized right now <laughs> like it's um it's been three months three months since I turned into a 10th grade and it's the last year of junior high mm. and I'm full of like since I started the grade there were like right there was already like pressure of like I have the chicken for next year or something like that I have assignments right now that is on a pile of is a pile of um, 
like a mountain in my desk. And like, and on top of that, I have things that I have to do from the projects. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm in the empty house talking with people. That's why, like, I'm not that organized right now. I'm not used to all this busyness. I mm. opened the uh, um, cafe in the abandoned house a month ago. So I'm still not used to everything coming out. That's why, yeah, I'm not organized right now. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't go to any club activities. Um, I used to go and I used to belong to the boys volleyball team and well there are two reasons I had to, um, to quit one was all the pressure from the teacher like everything was like really scary pressuring mm. <laughs> like they once you don't do well they might like just get mad they throw the ball to you it might happen stuff like that and the second reason well this is just another reason that I cover up so that's not the main reason is um that I had the library by the river every Sunday which won't let me to go to the game yeah so I was just like ah well I have the library so goodbye so I had to quit all right thank you so much <laughs> yes good good support good family support <laughs> togetherness is there um and I, I don't want to like stay on this topic to to only be but I, I want to ask one more question to Susanna and, and maybe Antonio about this but um it, but there is something about like the practicalities of of what's required and expectations and and how you actually advocate for your children to do something which is you know maybe off off the beaten track um, um, and I, I just want to say one thing to you though, Daisuke, um, it sounds like you, you had a really hard experience in, in the volleyball club and, but, and, or, but I'm not sure which I want to say, maybe that's one of the things that makes you an amazing host of your mm. cafe, because you're not like, oh, my life is all peachy and my life is all perfect. It's also like, we're the same. We've, we've all, you know, we've suffered on different levels on different ways. So not not great yeah. that you had to go through it but there's a a takeaway for you and for your your customers i guess well wow, that's the first time i hear that wow. yeah, yeah I, th I think that's really one reason yeah it makes you makes you uh empathetic and understand mm -hmm. what it's like and how powerful it is to have a, a place to go to share what's going on so mm -hmm. so, Thank you. so so proud of you Anyway, I'm like really filling up here. Stop, stop. I'm so not professional <laughs> interviewer. So, but Susanna, so so practically speaking, like when it when it comes to like saying, okay, I want to, you know, disengage from the mainstream, from the matrix. I want to not be in club. How, how did Susanna and Antonio, how how do you handle with the with the school? I think um, um, there's a lot um um of things wrong things going on in the japanese education system yeah and uh, there's a lot of pressure in the kids mm -hmm. a lot and way too much yeah for example the clubs not to mention the pressure on the teachers yeah they have to come work you know um very early in the morning prepare the classes teach do the clubs yeah yeah and then go back to the office and prepare the classes for the next day is is miserable. It's a miserable job, and extend it to the kids, yeah. And for the kids to the Jiken system in Japan, you know, that shouldn't be happening in you know in the educational system, especially in a in a in a country like Japan, you know, we're. Uh, first world country, we are supposed to be taking more care of the education, and we're not. Yeah, um, I mean, whatever the jukus are delivering, it should be delivered in public schools. Mm. Okay, no one should go to juku to get a better education, mm. unless they want, as an option, go to a private school. But that is something unfair, and it's not available to everyone, you know. A lot of kids 
that don't have the possibilities, they're just forgotten. And they're missing huge opportunities in life. Yeah, just because of the system. And it's uh, like um, one day I was talking with a friend and the, uh, about the education system in Japan. And we said, this is, this is a training to become a salaryman. Yeah. yeah. It's not a, um, a shacho, right? Or a C yeah. training to become a salaryman. Yeah. So it's like, kind of like in a way we're telling our kids, shut up and do it. Um, and I don't really like that. So when the kids have, you know, the chance to quit. So when the kids say, hey, this is too much, I go like, well, you have the basics, the good basics, the family education, that's the basic thing that we need. So you become a good person in life. Yeah. So everything, if they fail, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm best friends with failure. You know, <laughs> I mean, after becoming a mom, and that's, that's another thing, after becoming a mom, it's been so hard for me to go back to the workforce. Yeah, it's, I've been rejected and rejected and rejected, you know, from every single job I applied. Yeah, and at some point I said, well, well, it's not me, I don't know, it's the system because everyone is asking me, who's going to take care of your kids when they get sick? And that shouldn't be legal, first of all. And then I go like, me, or is I the one who's going to take care of my kids when they get sick? And reject it, reject it again, you know? So I decided to just make my own thing, my own school which I keep it very small and I keep very intimate with my kids with and with my students and it's motivation based yeah and uh, you know and we just laugh yeah um we're in English and stuff anyways that's another thing but if it wasn't for failure I would never have been able to do this to get a job of my own to work as my own boss doing what I like the way I like it, you know? And it's the same for the kids. For me, for me, um, raising my kids is the longest job I had ever. <laughs> and so I want to prove that I can do it really, really well. Yeah. And um, for me, it's very important that um, I want to give to the community, I want to give to society, but I usually don't have like enough money for charity. And I don't give money to charity, you know, so much, but instead I'm going to give society good people, good adults, mm. and that's in the process. So that is my biggest contribution to society, raise people of good. So if they fail at school, if they just don't get the highest grades, if they, go, if they don't go to the best juku, if they don't go to the best school, it's fine. If they quit, yeah, Bukatsu, it will be fine. Yeah, the kids will be fine. And I want to just take a little bit of that pressure mm. from them so they can be good people, mm. you know? So it, probably I put more pressure in, you gotta be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be the best academically, but you better be good people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Style. <laughs> or something. Yeah. You know, that is kind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you, because I remember um, telling um, um, and, and one thing and, and a few big things that I think I've been doing, yeah, to to raise that and dice the way I I I am. It's um, many of my friends when were concerned about them being half. Yeah, because mm. I'm yeah I'm Japanese, but I'm Japanese, <laughs> um, but um, raising kids as half, yeah. And uh, putting too much emphasis in the fact that our kids are half is bad because then what we can is make our kids victimize themselves, you know, by, um, a thing they cannot change. They can they can't look different. That's mm. the way they look. Mm. 
But if, if they have a fight with a friend at school, for example, yeah, it's not because, oh, that kid kicked me because I'm half. Never. That, that kid kick you because- Because they're having anger issues. Yeah. <laughs> anger issues or yeah. whatever. Yeah, let's analyze why that kick hit you. First of all, you don't kick back, never ever kick back, never ever punch back. But, you know, you just turn your back and walk the other way, don't come back. Or if, if, if you think you, if you have part of the fault there, then, okay, try to talk it over and apologize. But when I was a kid, there was no bullying. There was no, no that. It's, that. it's a fight. So when kids fight, they just do nakanori. They just like talk. Make it up, yeah. Yeah. Apologize, make it up, you know, whatever it takes. But if you tell your kids, oh, that's because you, you're half, then, then you have to talk with the teacher and then it becomes a big bullying problem, you know, and that wasn't necessary. And, and meanwhile, our kids are feeling like victims mm. and, and, and raising victims is not a good thing at all. We want to raise kids that are strong in a way, mm. like, no, 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 not, not, not as strong to punch back, not as strong to kick back, but it's strong in a way that, you know, this is, I'm not a victim. Yeah. I don't want- Strong in your own identity. I, I love what you say, like you can't, there's something about yourself you can't change. It's, uh, it's there. So it's, it's not an excuse for anything. It's not a reason for anything. It just is. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. And, then, and then we don't want our kids to have this sign, big sign here saying fragile, you know? And uh, that's, that's the thing we, we need kids. To, and another thing is like, okay, you have to, you have to. And I remember telling Sarah and Daisuke when I were- Susanna, I just have to do your family. I'm just loving the love from your family of all like- You can just mom feel is her, on. Right? Mom She's is on. Mom. She's an amazing <laughs> mom. You can just feel the energy from her. <laughs> Like, no, I love that. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to acknowledge uh, for those who are just <laughs> listening, like the family is just like smiling, la so laughing, laughing at slash with, uh, but so much love, so much love in the room for, for Susanna. I just wanted to acknowledge that. But sorry, please tell us your other things, Susanna. Yes. yes. My other thing is like, I remember, I remember being nervous. Yeah. About Sarah and Daisuke going to first grade and stuff and being left out or feeling left out or something. But then I, I, I thought it over and I got a solution. It was very interesting because I, I started telling Sarah and Daisuke, well, if you don't fit in in a group, like in a group of the, the cool girls or the cool kids, you know, you just have to, if you feel like you're left out and even if you are not left out, you scan the school for kids that are left out. Yeah, and you talk to them for the long, you talk to the lonely kids mm. and you make friends with them and you ask like, hey, can we play? You know, let's just play and, and make a group of kids that are being left out. Okay, that way you will never feel left out and, and no kids are going to feel left out at home, at, at school. And then they started motivating all the other kids and that was beautiful. I mean, yeah, the, the, the things that they did at school too was beautiful when they were in elementary school, so. No. Even in junior high, I, I remember writing letters to like kids that never came to school or stopped coming to school. But anyways, I was really good friends with the cool girls, the cool kids. But of course, I was really good friends with kids that are like really introvert or couldn't really talk to people. And and I really like that in a way. Of course, I enjoy school because I, you know, um, connect with people from so many backgrounds but I bet that boy or that girl that were feeling lonely will feel like but I have Sarah kind of thing oh <laughs> so nice yes I love that 
And even one of those things as well, you know, there, there are the kids who sort of seem like they're with the in crowd, but actually everybody has a moment where they feel excluded or isolated mm -hmm. at some point, even those mm -hmm. people who it seems like they have all the power, all the popularity. Mm -hmm. But one of the mm -hmm. things, you know, if your identity is all tied up in that and then you want to change like and everybody's into you know into i know some band and you're like i don't really like mm -hmm. them but i feel like i have to like them it's often deeper than that of course but you know that kind of the code switching or the covering the covering maybe that people have to do to fit in regardless of of where they are perceived to be in in their mm -hmm. standing in society is very interesting yeah like i had like um when i was in elementary i think it was tara but um we were like not like belonging to any group. It's not that we were belonging to like the cool kids. We weren't belonging to the like the left out kids. It's not that we were excluded. We were like it, it's like we had another another me in another group too, and we're like I'm in jumping around. I don't know every Fun. yeah every place. <laughs> And then, like, in elementary, when I, like, in the end of the sixth grade, like, I had a school trip, and it was, like, really ridiculous how they started. But, well, like, the cool kids, um, well, started to, like, kind of exclude me because, um, well, I wasn't awake that night, and they were talking about some, like, girl they like or something like that, and I wanted to know that, too. But they started excluding me because I wasn't awake. And then it didn't like hurt me that much. Well, of course I was like, ah, yeah, too bad. I'm excluded from them. But like they're not my only friends. I we both have so many friends. We, well, everyone from the grade is our friends. So I just had to go to the other people. Like I was like, "Hey, what's up?" And it would just be like, <laughs> "I've been there like the whole year." So I think that was really good. That's a really good message to have about you know one of the things with uh, like ikigai. People feel like, "Oh, I just have to have one. I just have to have mm -hmm. one thing that makes me feel alive. One thing I want to get out of bed in the morning." But just like friends, like it's good to have multiple, mm. you know, if we only have one thing, like if your cafe was the only thing, if your, um, you know, library by the river was the only thing that you had in the world, like, you know, if suddenly somebody decides that, yeah, all cafes have to close again and um, all knock buildings knocked down or cafes, nobody wants to go to a cafe and that's the only thing, then what do you do? It sounds like um, everyone in this family has the ability to just go, okay, I'm going to bounce forward and I'm going to see what the next is. Antonio, I think you were going to say something. So let me yeah. give the mic. Yeah, very, very quickly, Jennifer, but I want to I wanna make sure I touch two things. Um, just to finish up with what Daisuke just mentioned and, and something that I have learned so much from, from the three of them, but I learned so much from Sarah and Daisuke and, and every day I learned something new. And um, something that Daisuke just mentioned about the time that he got excluded from his whole group of friends and all that and he joined the other group I remember how much and how excited he came back home telling me about new things he learned from this new group uh things that he had never explored before yeah because I never there was knew a completely Pokemon. group of people that basically he didn't have any relation with and mm -hmm. things that probably for us were no important and things that I remember telling me about how much he learned about Pokemon which <laughs> never have in his radar right but he said well if I had to hang out with this group of people, I'm going to try to put a little bit of emphasis and trying to learn their interests so I can actually get closer to them and kind of learn from them. So I found I, both of them actually do this quite often that they, they adjust themselves to say, okay, if I need to adjust, then I will adjust and I will try to make sure I get closer to, to them so they feel closer to me. So th that was a really good example that I took it with that situation where he felt, okay, they're mm -hmm. going to close the doors on me. Then let me just, adjust and adapt to the new situation and, and get it over with. And that was a, a really good lesson for me. I remember exactly that time when Daisuke was having such a hard time uh, in the elementary school, but he actually handled it himself the best way he could. No one needed to go up to the school and talk to anyone. No one needed to talk to parents or anything. Daisuke did it himself and basically navigate that situation through it. So 
uh, just to close that up. And um, I wanted to also just take you back. I think the question that uh, initially um, I started, Susan, explaining how we deal with no basically pressure on the kids on, ah, you need to do Bukatsu or you need to follow the rules. Or, so as you can see, we, we are a very different type of family. We, we, <laughs> we, uh, we all participate, we all communicate and we let them bring their ideas to the table. And that's why we had such a great project coming from them. There's actually some things that they both created. But also at, this, at the beginning, I'm, I'm from Venezuela which I know that how lucky we are living in a country like Japan. So for us, I, for Susan and I, we, it's, it's been always very important that they see other things, they see other cultures, they see other. And I think um, we've been given the opportunity to do that. We, we've been able to, we've been lucky enough to be able to travel out of Japan and around Japan and see different environments, different things. And I think giving that opportunity for them to see that have opened up their mind and how open on their heart so they know also that well you know if you don't follow the straight line and everybody else it's gonna be okay it, it will be okay mm -hmm. i remember we took sarah and daisuke for almost a month out of school when they weren't in elementary school and the only reason was that we were going to india and of course the teacher were not really sure what we were doing like are you sure you yeah this is what we're gonna do so we all we pack up and went to india for three weeks and and again, I know the teachers were probably shocked and they couldn't understand what we were doing, but I'm pretty sure they all learned a lot more in India and seeing what we saw in India than in the three weeks that we actually stayed dealing with wukatsus and things like that. So mm -hmm. I think that also gave them the, the opportunity to open up a little bit and realize, okay, yeah, you know, we don't really have to be a straight line all the time and also how lucky we are, how can we share some of these? And I think also that connected to some of the projects and all that. I know Daisuke was able to, to see how sometimes people can be under a lot of pressure, Bukatsu in school or in uh, uh, work or in many different situations. So having an open space for them to come and talk definitely will, will send them home smiling, send them home better, like they say. Same thing with Sarah, having people who actually struggling to find a book to read and exchange that information about that book having an opportunity to provide that space for them definitely will send them with a different mood a different way of seeing things so i think that's basically how we started and how we've been kind of guiding that skin Sarah, in that we don't have to be a follower one straight line if you want to do something else just present it tell us why and let us know why you want to do it let's discuss it and then if it makes sense then we support you that's that basically i think one of the main bigger process of making decisions within us right i'm hearing from like the whole the whole family that there's there's always a solution there's always another way to approach it um and also just a big sense of like everything will be okay like mm -hmm. nothing is unfigureoutable like every, we'll we'll find a way we'll work it out we'll get there and that there isn't just like one answer. That's kind of my, my takeaway, mm. my takeaway so far. Um, but I noticed on your family project website, you were talking, there was like a three-step process to um, the project. So who is the best person I can talk to about this? It was like, I've forgotten what the three steps are. It's like, have an idea and then talk, make a plan and take action. Who wants to who wants to take this question and talk about this uh, this process for the family project? Because Antonio, you just kind of hinted at it. Then, like we're gonna we're gonna find a solution. Mama. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it all comes down to communication. Yeah. We have a lot of communication at home and probably what makes us different nowadays yeah, um, to other families is um, a set of rules to, to keep the communication flow going on smoothly in our family. Mm -hmm. One thing is like we don't keep the TV on all the time. We barely turn, turn on the TV probably not even every day, only like a few nights a week when there's uh, um, family time, when there's time to, to, to have a TV time or something new, some big news going on, on you know, on, yeah, you know, at the moment and 
um, but uh, TV is nothing that we because it's it's very easy to get just distracted. Okay, it's sort of on in the background, isn't it? In in many homes. Yeah, it's like in the background. But if I'm talking to Sato or Dice again, we're talking about something. They just go like, oh, and then they start they stop listening to me. Yeah, yeah. can be frustrated cause trouble so you just open but we do have the mu music on all the time we so, love music yeah we love music but and mm -hmm. so we we just play the play the whatever playlist uh yeah, maybe you can share the the kumagai family playlist we can put it put it in the show notes uh, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy so we have focus time we have like dancing getting crazy time oh, yeah. like so happy in the morning it has to be something like motivating yeah get us mm -hmm. out of like go yeah <laughs> it today and yeah mm -hmm. so we have different um playlists but the other thing is like we control a lot our um smartphone use mm -hmm. and um, as as parents, we try not to do that in front of the kids all the time, or at least be more available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the kids, they have to have a limit. It's not that they can use it like 24-7. And the, me as a teacher, I have the sad, sad experience of teaching kids from a very small age, but but gradually they became so addicted to their phones mm. and they became hikikomori, you know, and it's just the phone. So, so hikikomori for uh, listeners who don't know what hikikomori is, could you explain? Oh, um, what is the word in English? There is a word in English for that, but basically are people that are they don't go out of their houses. They just stayed at home and because they don't want any social contact. They don't, they're not interested in socializing with anyone. They might be, well, there's a little bit of depression probably. Yeah, and the fact that they feel ashamed of, you know, of doing what they're doing or not being able to stop what they, they can't stop. You know, so there are many reasons for a hikikomori, but one of the biggest reasons that I found, and it's not only one student, a few students, yeah, that went through this and became hikikomori because of their addiction to the phone. As parents, we cannot let this happen to our kids. We are the managers. We are the ones in control because if, if it was for kids, they would just go forever, you know, without control. And they don't know where to draw the line yeah and here's where that is our job to draw the line you know in a kind way in a nice way and we when kind and nice doesn't work we go mad and scary <laughs> That's so, they, so they get it because there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing wrong of you know of being scary um, when it needs to be scary. A lot of people go like, oh, I don't want to be like the, the scary mom or the tiger mom, but compassion. Yesterday, Anthony and I were, were uh, watching a TV program um, about this. Compassion, yeah, goes beyond being nice. Yeah. Sometimes when you want um, the other person to be really, really a better person mm. and nice and kind is not working, then compassion goes beyond nice and kind for a bit for the benefit of the other person. You know, not for your own benefit. Yeah, for the benefit of you. I really want you to be better than this. Yeah. You don't understand my nice words, then there, you know. <laughs> like, but with with love, right? With with compassion yeah. in the oh, in the yeah. it's not yeah. that we get trauma or not. It's never <laughs> never with hatred. Yes. Yeah. Antonio. Yeah. No, no, I just I, I know that uh, Jennifer have a time limit and I know that she wanted to go over the three steps that we do so Sarah and I can talk about the project. I know you have you, you can go and we all can go very passionate about what we want to say. But I know I want to stay so they have the time to talk about their project. Sorry, I had to be timekeeper yes. of the family here. 
Thank you, Antonio, <laughs> for keeping us on. Well, actually, maybe the way to handle this, um, Sarah, is because it's actually your project is about keeping people off the phones and onto books mm -hmm. and is a different uh, mm -hmm. type of learning and access and connection. So maybe this is might be a big ask. Uh, you can do the double. You can talk about the three steps and how they applied to Library by the River. Would that work? Yes, maybe it will. Um, first, you I could handle it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, I came out with the idea of the Library by the River. So Library by the River is basically, we do it every Sunday by the river. Close to my house is called the Tama River. And we do it under this huge kayaki tree. And we take about 1,500 books, I would say, to the river every Sunday from 10 to 12. It's only two hours, but it, it truly means a lot to the community. It really changed our neighborhood, our community. Um, it really changed the people. So uh, we've been doing this since 2020, April 2020. So it's been over two years now. Uh, we, we take 1,500 books there, but we have over 5,000 books, I would say, right now in our house. So Mama's background actually- <laughs> Yeah, we can see. Yes, that's all the books that has been donated from all around Japan and of course from the library. And uh, what we do is that from those 1,500 books, people can take as many books as they want. And if people want to drop off their old books, they're welcome to do that. And um, well, yes, I had this idea when COVID started, actually. Daisuke and I just enjoy going to the libraries. Uh, we, we, don't, we didn't really have um, books at home because we just borrow all of them in the library. So it really um, affected us when the library closed yeah. um, due to COVID. And uh, we didn't have any assignments of school. And of course we were, we belonged to a public Japanese school. So we didn't have online classes either. Yeah. So uh, we had a lot of time basically not really doing anything. So uh, I mean, um, when that happened, I really thought that it, it wasn't only our problem how about the how about the the guy that always um was reading newspaper in the library or the kids that were enjoying reading picture books in the library how are they doing right now and um i thought that we i really had to do something about it and um i found this thing called the little free library when i went to the u.s in 2019 and uh, actually it was my first time seeing that and I made a research and it's just like a global uh, thing right now. And it's basically, well, the same system as the library by the river, but smaller in like a wooden box. Yeah. And we can find that in parks and stuff like that. And um, it was unique, first of all, because it was free. And second of all, because it was, um, you know, combined with nature, we don't really see much um, collaboration with books and nature in Japan books are meant to be in the in mm, the um, building inside yes yeah. but it, that was really unique to see um and I because I was really passionate in Bukatsu at the time I didn't really you know thought of making this as a project or bringing this in Japan but I thought okay this is the time to actually do this um in Japan so uh when before well, just right before COVID started I was really not a really good teenager actually um, I didn't have a phone back then so I was really mad to my parents why I don't have a phone so I, I, I didn't have uh, much time to talk with my parents but when COVID started and when I had this idea it was the time to actually sit down with my parents and Daisuke and bring my idea to the table and that's how everything started. And that's how I brought my ideas. That's my first step. And my second step is to not make plans and move, right? Right? Mama, give me a guide. Yes, right? And okay. not, yeah. <laughs> and um, yes, uh, so when I first started this, I thought like, okay, so I had to go write some documents and take it to the, the department um, in my 
uh, city hall. City, yes, my city mm. hall. Um, yeah. sort of get approval, pres- get a license. Yes, yes, yes. Like you know, and present my idea and actually, you know, saying, "Hey, how about if we have this in our parks?" And um, well, it ended up like uh, we can't do that because of like the law. Actually, we like in. I don't know. I don't. I'm not really good at law, so I can't say much. But um, so I couldn't do it with the city hall. I couldn't do anything with them. So I, when I first got that uh, phone call from them, I thought, well, you know, it's such a worldwide activity, and it's 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 you know, it's everywhere in the U.S. Why in Japan they can do that? Or I was actually like why Japanese people are square-minded or something, super frustrated about it. But um, when I talked that with my family, they said, like, then why are you stopping here? We should, go to, we should take it to the next level. So uh, one of the things that they said, uh, the, the reason they say it no is because um, there aren't any people, like, actually watching the little free library we need someone here or we don't have anyone responsible for it or that would take care of it so we decided to the opposite of that we're going to take care of it we're going to take responsibility and we're going to be there when there's an event and that started to like change the whole idea and we said like okay so i really like the nature and the collaboration with it so what's the you know, the nearest and most, like, like, the nearest nature, I would say, like, um, and it was, it was, it was, the nearest. yes, what? what, I think our internet's finally going a bit slow, oh, the library, <laughs> the oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so we we decided to do it in the river because it's it's such an open space and it's beautiful under the tree. So um, yes, we do. We decided to do it there, and we just in the morning we got rejected by the city hall, but at night by dinner time we already had the idea of the library by the river, and in the next uh, the next day we started collecting books. And it was just like, bam, bam, bam. We didn't have any schedule. It was like, next step, next step. What can we do next? What can we do next? And Got it. from the next- so Don't, week, don't plan, uh, just move. Yes, that's that's what mm. I mean. Like, and maybe don't ask for, don't ask for permission. Ask for <laughs> forgiveness. <laughs> yes. Um, is, is another good one. But, 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 but perhaps mm. the thing of that is sometimes, you know, we need to- do a pilot and we need to show people proof mm. of like yeah. this can work and yeah. um i i'm trying to remember who said this but um it was a ceo of a tech company and i was reading about like um uh what's the word um uh, like um hang on where people are like telling jokes on the stage um and ad-libbing and comedian. so on comedians yes. yes comedians so improv Uh, So in improv, Improv. the important thing is, I get there in the end, improv, the important thing is yes and, but this uh, CEO was saying, oh, Japan has a no because culture. Uh, So doesn't say yes and, tends to say, oh, no, we can't do that because of this, which sounds mm -hmm. like what you you came up with there, Sarah. So Mm -hmm. um, sometimes if you can show people, like, let's just try it. Let's just do a small Mm -hmm. example. And then we have... um, a case that we can bring and we can show how it can run mm-hmm. and so people don't worry like oh it's going to be all this extra work for us and it's going to be all this extra health and safety for us and it's going to be no because no because mm-hmm. you actually just move just do it yeah you don't need a yeah. thousand books or 1500 books mm-hmm. on day one you just need 10 right yeah and then or maybe you just even need one maybe i'm <laughs> yeah. setting the, the thing so high you just need one yes. what makes a library i don't know if there's a <laughs> a definition but the, behind yeah. the idea like well, you know i'm sure dice even... case cafe doesn't have like a full service menu right yeah <laughs> you can start from music zero right we don't even we don't need a book to start a library either we don't need coffee to start a cafe we just can look for it yeah awesome so there was move and there's one more step what's the final step then or is that the final step 
What's the final step? Maybe action is the final step. Action. So don't plan. Maybe I read it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> just just yeah. do it. Maybe <laughs> then iterate. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So well, that's like the first step, it was just Daisuke and I um taking our seats and in this like little camping cart, we took uh 70 books and day one um we were well people just passed by with it they didn't really talk anything and i remember really literally no one came that day and uh they passed on but people started acknowledging that like okay these kids are trying to do something and people started gathering but um yeah i, I really learned that some some kids that really want to start a project or want to do something in the society i always say you just it doesn't have to be like a super per, like it doesn't have to be perfect on day one it doesn't have to be super scheduled super gorgeous you have to have money on day one it can start from 70 books and you end up with like 5,000 at the end of the day mm -hmm. or even if it doesn't end up in 5,000 you can find something other that you're passionate about it can end up in a good way at the end of the day so I mean it, it's okay and it was really nice to have Daisuke um, helping me from day one. So uh, thank you so much. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I, okay. Hey. Oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Jennifer. I would say that another step to add to all of that is consistency. Yeah, mm. that is very, very important because kids have been doing their projects for a long time and it's like no give up. Yeah, um, sometimes there are not very, very good days, like especially in very cold winter days at the mm. library. And no one comes and we go like, we come back home like, uh, but you know, the next the next week is a lot better because the mm. people that didn't come last week are coming or, you know, and so it's, 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 it's about keeping it up and whatever is not only the projects like, um whatever i find that is good for the family for example like uh, energetic green smoothies in the morning and i you know once uh, a friend told me about what green smoothie what is that you know and we've been drinking green smoothies in the morning for over 10 years now and i i think I, we now have a very healthy core yeah, but it's it's about it's about keeping it up all the time. Just continue doing that consistently. Little by little. Mm. Yes, I think that's also important. Yeah, and and I really love this idea as well, um, Sarah, that you shared about. Uh, yeah, it does, and and Dice K also shared. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect from day one. You don't even need to have coffee to start a cafe. Um, and uh, reminds me of something I heard, which is. You know, don't compare uh, somebody else's middle to your day one. So when mm. people are, yeah, you know, we look and we see people who are doing other things, other projects, and they have all this funding and they have all of this, or they have, you know, this website and this Instagram and this whatever, all of those, or any any type of uh, thing. Don't compare yourself to where they are, because once mm. they were where you were, but you know about them because they're further along on, on their path. Mm -hmm. So um, just you, you are where you are. Start now. Uh, I love it. You know, move, move, don't plan. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, don't let the bureaucrats get you down as well is the other message I'm taking away. Uh, but Antonio, I'm going to be the timekeeper of this family now. And I'm going to ask <laughs> everyone to go around the room and briefly, Susanna, uh, briefly share, I'm just joking with you, briefly <laughs> share for the listeners, you know, if there's one message you want them to take away um, from listening to this or from when they're thinking about Ikigai and, and how to have a, um, a great life or how they want to live their life, what's one thing you would like them to think, feel or do after listening to this podcast so i'll go to antonio first Ooh. then we go susanna <laughs> then we're gonna go daisuke then we're gonna go sarah so you know the order that you have all right antonio uh, you kick us off okay um i think i think that one of the things that i get from here ikigai is that that 
the transformation from passion to action. Um, I think that that's such important step and not everybody is able to do it. You can have people who are very passionate about something, but like, like Sarah and I are saying, that they struggle on making it possible because they put in self in front of them already the limitation. Whoa, how? So if you have that in mind already, okay, how can I make this thing that I'm very passionate into some action? How can I make, how can I move that? And I, th I think that's kind of a key for each guy. So find why you are really passionate about it and how was the trigger to make it into action. Um, if you're going to find a job that you really feel passionate about it, uh, how can you grow in that job? If you find a hobby that you feel passionate about it, how can I make it happen? Um, I know, again, it, it's easier to say it than do it. Uh, but I think it's key um, to just sweep, be able to, to flip that switch and say, okay, I'm going to make action out of my passion. Make action out of your passion. Wonderful. All right. I think I've forgotten what order I said. Daisuke, I think I said next. Oh. Did I? <laughs> okay. Um, it was Mama first. Oh, was it Mama first? Okay. <laughs> okay, Daisuke, go ahead. Yeah, I can go. Good. Um, <laughs> well, like the Ikigai thing first. <laughs> well, I never talked about my Ikigai, but um, I thought about it like with my mom yesterday. Like, what? you guy and like I have a yeti guy which is like um what I feel and why I'm, I keep on doing my project but I don't have an icky guy like every morning like that's why my mom was asking me what do you wake up for and this is like your icky guy and then I'm like I wake up for going to school if not I'll get late so I that's just my guy I don't have an icky guy and I don't think like you need it for a living because I don't have it but I have a thing that I like but that's not if I lose that it's not that I'm not I'm gonna die right it's that I, well that's my key guy and my advice <laughs> well I was gonna say yeah the first step or something like that but well Papa said it so I'm, I just thought about another thing um one thing I really ha like really think that is important in my life it's like having something that I like it's like I like reading I like taking pictures it's like you don't have to like just cram yourself up with all those like stressful stuff like if it's work studying I just can have a break sometimes it's not a bad thing, but it's not like a humiliating thing to just have a break. So I think taking action and keep on going and doing it hard is a really good thing. But like, well, making yourself rest is I think another yeah. thing that is important. And I think that's, okay, you know, that feeling that you have when you're reading a book and time just passes or you're taking a photo and you really in the moment with it. That's another expression of ikigai, mm -hmm. right? The feeling of like being being here and being now. So I think maybe there are some things showing up that might be ikigai for you as well. So, yeah, sure. It yes, is. I'll find that. Yes, but you know it's there. It's already you have the things that make you feel alive. So we can be expansive, not just like one tiny point. Thanks, Daisuke. Good rising to the occasion there when your dad had stolen your answer. Let's go to <laughs> Susanna and then we wrap up with Sarah. Okay. Well, um, to keep my ikigai, maybe it's, um, it's just about um, like, um, a life thing uh, that I can think of is um, um, being able to let go on things that you cannot control. Because mm. uh, there are things... Um, um other people's actions are things that you cannot control people doing this or that to you you cannot control that but as long as you're able to control your own actions yeah you always have two options you know the bad way or the right way yeah in terms of parenting in terms of being you know just a member of your community in terms of whatever professionally you know as a teacher is always 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 
if you if you do a good thing, it's going to have good consequences. It's going to bring smiles to people. You're going to feel good about it. But if you choose if you choose the wrong way, um, being mean or whatever, yeah, you you know you're going to make someone mad. Your your actions are going to affect someone. That is not going to bring you good feelings back. You're going to feel bad too. And if you feel bad, the probability is that you feel worse and worse at some point are going to be there. So just separate the actions, like the actions that you cannot control, the actions, your own actions are the ones that you can control. And if you can control it, just do it right. Do everything right. That's that's it. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Susanna. And finally, Sarah. So what advice do you have around the theme of Ikigai mm. for people well, who are listening? Yes. Um, one thing that I love about my family, and I always tell this to my friends because I'm really proud of it, is that, um, of course, Daisuke and I, as uh, children, we respect our parents and we really look up to them. But at, at the same time, they they look really like they respect us as their child and as, as a person. And I, I love that um, connection between them, that we respect each other and we, we look up to each other and we support each other. And I, I think all families deserve to have some like connection like that and um you can start from a little step you can you can hug your kids today you can say i love you to your kids you can you know actually talk about like hey what did you do today it can be like a really small step but that can mean a really nice um relationship with your family members and um for people that are listening today i really want them to reflect about their family, about their day, about their time spending with their family members and kind of like think about the next step they can do to have a nice connection with family members. And yeah, that's it. Thank you. Gorgeous. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I have had an amazing time connecting with the Kumagai family. Just so inspiring, so much love in the room between all of you, so much respect as well. As, and of course, loads of practical ideas and steps to take. So in the show notes, everybody will be able to check out all the projects there. So they can, uh, you can go to the cafe, you can go to the uh, library by the river, you can find out about family project. Um, so please check out support, but as Antonio mentioned, turn that passion into action. And if there's something that you want to do, just bring it. Yeah. Make it real. <laughs> One step. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much, Kumagai. It was amazing to meet you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.